well, I don't need to introduce myself to you. That's been done. But this evening, I'm going to share to you um, a testimony in, of myself, but it's going to go and lead into um, a verse that God put on my heart as I was preparing this and getting this ready. And um, my testimony is uh, basically I'm going to share a little, clip it into my past before I became a Christian. So in my family, eh, there's uh, eight of us. I have four, brother, four sisters and three brothers, and I'm second oldest, okay? And my life was uh, really challenging as I grew up. It was very lonely, even though it may think that I talk a lot and, you know, I might have been the loudest in my family and probably the more rebellious. I was really a lonely child inside. Um, also came from a very abusive background, uh, my first encounter with abuse was sexual abuse, and that was at the age of six years old. And it wasn't a male, it was a female. Then at the age of, um, that, and then that person went away and, you know, and never saw that person again. And then at the age of um, eight years old up to 11, um, sexual abuse carried on and kept happening to me over those years. And it was a member of the family and um, who married into the family. Then eventually they moved away and I never got to see him again. And it was like, choice, you know, I can carry on and keep going to whatever it was out there. Then at the age of 13, I happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. And I ended up, and I ended up in a situation where I was gang raped, tied up all night and they did to do whatever they wanted to do. Then after that, I ran away. I took off, just ran away. And two weeks later, I came back. My parents didn't know where I'd gone, anything like that. I came back two weeks later only to encounter my father's presence, my dad, and that wasn't a very good one. From there, I was um, beaten and kicked out of the family. I never said anything, didn't, didn't know how to say anything back then. And then I went to go and live with some friends for about six weeks. So my grandparents heard about this. So all they knew was this rebellious child just took off and, you know, she didn't care about anything or anyone. So they come to get me. And then at that, um, at that stage, I went to go and live with them. And um, I stayed with them right through till I left there to go to work. Um, so... When all that happened and that I was like, you know what, my life was completely involved in everything. I think I had everything. I just went out and did anything and everything I wanted to do after that except for gangs. That was the one thing I, I never was drawn to. But drugs became the biggest centre of my world. Then in 1983... Oh, sorry. Okay. Then in 1983, I met my husband, Victor. We moved over to Aussie, um, to a place called Queanbeyan. It came in 1986, and I answered it. And it was the Lord. And it was when I gave my life to the Lord. I never hesitated. I knew at that time that this is what I needed in my life. And so that was basically what it was like. It was like, bang, I heard it. That was it. My whole life was surrendered over to him, and I gave it to him. I had to work on many areas of my life and many things. as rejection and self-worth and value and so many other things. And I'm still working and dealing with those things right now. I haven't finished. God hasn't finished. That's okay. You know... But as I look back to those times and look back to what God's done, one thing was evident. And it was the time when I was praising the Lord. It was the time when, when I was giving him all the glory and all the honour that I heard the scripture say to me. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 17, 5, 17, sorry, it says, You have become a new creation Behold, all things have become new and the old is gone. And that was what I heard when I was praising him. 
I praise the Lord. The dictionary defines praise as the act of expressing approval and admiration to him. Living a life of praising God is such an important part of who we are and who he is. It takes the focus of ourselves and it puts it back on God. This evening, this is the very thing I believe that God wants us to do, is to focus on him, is to praise him. Look what happened tonight. Look what the young ones did as they took us into his presence. All of a sudden, nothing else mattered but him. All of a sudden, all those things that that we were caught up in and that we've been so driven by and we're so focused on just begin to melt away. It doesn't mean that they're not there. It just shows you that there's a greater power that's there that can overcome these things and that will help us in our journey. God deserves all the praise. God deserves all the glory. To God be the glory for the things he has done. Remember that song? To God be the glory for all the things he has done. In my life, in your life, and he continues to do that. He has done great things, hallelujah. He has done great things. He has done great things. Bless his holy name. What a name, a name above all else. It's just not a name that's written on our lips or said in our life. It's a name that's, that's become a part of who we are and it shows to other people of his greatness and who he is and where he brings us to and where we are today. I serve in the church, as Sue said, in Frankston, Connect Christian Church. Our senior pastor is Andrew, Andrew Drummond and Donna Drummond. And um, Andrew often gets us to, to preach. You know, and I'm always going, when, he, when I see my name up there, I tell it, I freak out, guys. I, I totally do. I go into the office. I have this little office. I go in there. And I'm having this conversation with God. And I'm saying to God, tell me what lie can I tell to Pastor Andrew that I may not preach? I'm thinking of everything so I don't have to get up there and talk, you know? And, and I'm like, oh, I don't think that's, I don't think God's going to tell me what to lie about to my senior pastor. You know, he, he ain't going to do that. And so I sit there and um, my nerves start to come up. And then all of a sudden... It was at this point and this time when I was rostered on again and that was only about a week ago and it came back again. And I freaked out totally. I had a little bit of a meltdown. Yeah, we pastors that look like we're in control, let me tell you, we're human, okay? I had a little bit of a meltdown and I just said, I can't do this and I'm not going to do it. And it's probably the first time that I've backed out of something and I didn't end up preaching. But let me tell you, something happened when I left the team downstairs, our school that we go to, Life Centre, they prayed for me, they spoke over me. And Pastor Sue said to me, do you believe what they're saying? And I went, yep. She says, I don't believe you. I was like, yeah, because she was right. You know, and it's like, "Mm." but something shifted in my heart when I left there. I started having a light bulb moment, you know, we call it a revelation. And I got the scripture and it said, and God said this to me, I am the author and the finisher of your faith, Margaret. I am the author and the finisher. He's the author and finisher of your faith, of every single person here as well as mine. He's the one who is writing my story, my life, my today, my yesterday and my future. I'm standing here because he has written my life story and he hasn't finished with it yet, like he hasn't finished with yours. And, um, and he wants to be able to take your life story where he gets all the glory and he gets all the praise and anybody that's looking upon it and reading it, it'll be a love letter from him to them no matter what situation or position or what they're going through. Philippians 1, 6 says this, And I am certain that God who began a good work or great work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. He ain't returned yet because we're still here. Hallelujah. So he's still working in us. He's still working in you and I. This day, this year, this month, this hour, this church, this people, this moment, this is what God wants me to tell you. God wants to rewrite 
your life. He wants to rewrite your life story. He wants to rewrite everything about you. Look what he's written. He's written the book, the book of truth, not the book of lies. So if he can write something like that, which he's already written your name and everything else, why not give it to him? It is a book of truth and life. He wants the pen you are holding. And that was what he said to me. Margaret, give me your pen. Surrender your pen. Give it to me. Because when you write your story, you make a mess of it. And, you too, and you're too busy listening to the lies of the enemy. See, the thing was, I had given my pen to the enemy. I had been, been believing in him and listening to what he says. And he was mucking my mind up. God says tonight, surrender your pen, and give it to him because he writes a better story. It doesn't matter what kind of background you've had or where you've come from, what you've done or what you're still doing or what you've gone through or even for those who have fortunate lives, even for the rich, for those who think they've got it all together. He wants the pen from you as well. Don't let those things be your focus because they will still kill and destroy you and tell you there is no opportunity. There is no hope. It's too late for you. There isn't a purpose for your life. Look at what happened. Shame upon you. Look what you keep doing. You can't stand in the presence of of the Lord. And he keeps flicking, flicking, flicking. Well, guess what? He can be erased in the blood of the Lamb, in Jesus' name, but by my faith, putting it into action and giving it to him and surrendering it to him. We constantly remain in these areas. You know, it says because we like these things. Well, I don't. And I've read a little bit of the truth. There's a whole lot in there. And I like what I read. I like what he says. I, lo- I don't just like, I love it. And it's great to be able to know that we have a God as we serve who can write and who can has a purpose for us, who has a call on our lives to fulfill. Today, tonight, God, again, I say, wants the pen you're holding. We're making a mess of things. When we surrender it to him, he reminds us of things. He reminds us and he says, you are the light of the earth. You are the salt of the world. You have been called for a purpose with her tonight. I give you the breath of life. I created you and formed you. I set my son for you to sanctify you, that you may be drawn into his presence. It's his forgiveness that works through us to other people. Why wouldn't we give him the pen? Tell you, I held on to that pen too long. I'm giving my pen. Because I love it when he says, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. I never used to understand that verse. I used to have trouble going, fearfully, wonderfully made. Fearfully, yeah, okay. He made me. Then I realised how much he made me, how much he loved me. So much that if he can build a place for um, the Israelites, while he was walking with them through the desert those 40 years, and, and, and get them to make this amazing looking place of worship and a and, and, um, place where Moses could go into the presence, and everything in there was just like, oh, I don't know, choice. It was just like crazy. It was so beautiful. It was, he, he, he had the right person doing the right things. Like, you know, that, that gold, whatever it is, that, that, Angel that had goes over the box. That's just one slab of gold. And he calls a guy to come in, you know, and he says, I want you to make this. This is what I want it to look like. He spent so much into that. That's just something that can just disappear. We are his. How much more in our lives that he can make into us something beautiful if he can make that presence. And he wants to show you off. He wants you to go out into your community. He wants you to go out into the broken. He wants you to go. He wants you to go out to the rich. He wants you to go to your families. Because when we don't, we become selfish. And we take back that pen again. 
Oh, hang on, God, a little bit of a mistake here. No, because when he writes the words, it's sealed. It's there forever. He is the author and the finisher of your life, of my life. I love that about God. You know, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. For God so loved you that he sent his son. The one thing that he loved. Why? So he can gain your love. This is our God. So that he can take hold of your pen and start to say, let me tell you about you. You who was broken. You know what? I'm not trying to um, escape from what happened to me. I'm not saying you just, you just forget about those things. No, those things are real. They did happen. But you know what? I let somebody come in to help me go on this journey, to help me heal this. Did it happen overnight? Heck no. And I'm still working through some things. But that's okay. I'm now standing where I am. Look where I am today. Look what he's given me. Not what I've taken. It's what he's given. It's what I now believe. Why? So he can receive all the glory and all the praise. I just want to encourage you. I want to encourage you guys. Give over your pen to him. Surrender that pen and let him, and you watch him write the most beautiful story about you. Go out to the nations. Let it scream from the mountaintops. Let it be seen that we have a God who's real and alive. That in all that, that as we love one another, they out there will see the love of God. Because that's what it's about. Doesn't matter what's happened to you. Doesn't matter what's gone down. I don't mean it doesn't matter, you forget about it. It matters to God and he'll help you on this journey if you give your pen to him. If you surrender that pen over. God will never force the pen from you. He will wait for you to hand it to him. He will wait for your permission to write your life story, your true life story that will bring home the lost and give glory to his name. Jeremiah 29, 11, God wants you to know that he has a plan and a purpose for your life. They are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. I believe tonight that's really what God wants to just say to you. You know, there's still this atmosphere of praise and, and his presence is, is here. I can go on and go on and go on, but you've got the gift of it. You've got the gift of it. I don't have to keep explaining to you. And it comes down to your choice, like I said. How has your life been written? How are you writing it? Are there areas there that God wants to deal with or wants to erase? And the enemy's too busy trying to tell you something else? I just want you to close your eyes. You know, when we close our eyes, it, it brings us into a place where we can focus on. Faye said, you know, tonight, bring him back on to that throne room of your heart. Picture that. It's that pen. Just surrender it and give it over. You and him, no one else, not your past, not the things you can't do, but the things he's enabled you to do and he will continue to do in your life. He will empower you. He'll bring people around you, right people. And as he begins to write your life story, hope comes, healing comes. Rejoicing comes, favour. And he'll surround you with a shield of favour, of love, hope and protection. He's not going to leave you. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsaken you. 
I'm not letting you on this journey on your own. I'm writing your story. And it's a beautiful story. Let go. Let go. Give it over to him. Let him come and touch the very soul of who you are. Surrender to him. Let him come. Rewrite your story. It's a beautiful story. It's a beautiful story. Surrender. 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 Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. the enemy says is a lie. He's the father of lies. I'm the father of truth. Thank you, God, for your sweet presence. Lord, this evening, if we have held on to that pen and We've been writing all the right and wrong things. I pray tonight, God, that each one of us will place it back into your hands. The mighty hand of protection, your refuge, a place where we can go to. We don't have to fear. You're the same today, yesterday, and forever. You never change. But we understand that you're going to do a change in our lives. I give to you tonight. I don't know all of you here tonight, but if there's anyone here tonight that has been writing their own story and and you've heard something that I've said tonight that may encourage you or inspire you to Receive the writer, Jesus Christ, as your Lord and Saviour. I invite you to come. I invite you to put your hand up where you are. Because you see, you can't write your story unless Jesus is the master of your life. So if there's anyone here tonight, who wants the Lord to rewrite this story for him to come into their lives. You can just put your hand up. I see your hand, darling. Amen. Suffer not the little children to come unto the Lord. If you're one of those people that have been writing your own story and there's anything that's encouraged you tonight or you've heard me speak and and, and you want to give that pen over and, you know, we want to pray for you. There's a whole team of ministry team here. I'm sure they'll pray for you. And you're just having a little trouble surrendering that for whatever reasons. That you, you know what, just put your hand up. If you don't want to come out to the front, that's cool. I don't want to embarrass you. Thanks, sister. Thank you. Pastor Sue. It's a real. There's a real gentle presence of God here tonight, and I think Margaret, you know, what she's trying to say is, come and receive of Him tonight. You know, 
come and just receive that gentle touch of the Spirit. We're going to open the altar, and I'm sure Margaret and other of the ministry team will be here. The, the night's Friday night's called Encounter Night, and it's to encounter His presence. And we've got time to do that tonight, and we're going to open the altar. And uh, there's a real gentle presence of God here, guys. You just get, as soon as you step into this place, into this altar, you can actually sense the presence of God in such a gentle way. So um, we're going to do that. We're going to sing This Is My Desire. So let me encourage you if you would like prayer tonight to come. This is my desire to walk. 